Hi, my name is David Capetti and welcome to DCO. In this video, we'll be going over how to create this furniture piece that has shelves. And one of the things that we do in this um, script is create a random extrusion. This way we can have a fun way of kind of displaying some artwork or maybe displaying something you're trying to sell. And then we also have the ability to, instead of having it be random, well, we can just pick a number. So if we just said, say 24 and then 24, well, it's going to keep it at 24. Or we just plug both of those into one and we can kind of keep it at the same um, kind of distance. But we can also have it be random, change the seed here to have kind of different uh, options. And now let's go into how it was made. So I'll be going over all of the steps in detail, but here I'm showing you some of the parameters. Of course, the subdivisions, this is going to update. Um, and here we have the offset for the frame. So all of the steps we'll be going over, it's a straightforward script. So if you're new at this, this uh, is perfect for you. And, um, but if you're also experienced, you might also learn some tricks here. I try to share for the most part techniques that you can use in any other design. So don't think that this is only for furniture. If you actually visualize this, this could actually be a building or um, something like that. So hopefully you are interested in this tutorial and let's jump right in. In this video, what I'll be doing is creating a base geometry. And so to do that, we'll go here and bring in a X Z plane. This way we can take this and go to a rectangle. With the rectangle, then we can give it an X and Y size. So let's go here to 24 for the X. And then for the Y, I'll just copy this one. So I'll slide it down, tap Alt. Now I'll plug this into the Y. For this next step, we're going to create the outer frame. So we'll bring a component called offset curve. And we'll take this rectangle and we'll plug it into the curve input. Then we'll take a distance. And since it's offsetting to the outside, I'll actually bring in a negative value. This way I can offset it to the inside. So I'll go here to 1.50. And so this will become the outer frame. This will become the width. And this will become the height. So this tutorial will go over how to create some furniture. And this is going to be a basic subdivision. This way we can kind of learn some techniques and use those techniques in any other design. So let's take these two and create a surface between those two. So let's go to boundary surfaces. And we'll plug in the outer curve and the inner curve and flatten the input. Next, we'll be working on creating the pattern inside. So for the pattern inside, we can subdivide it in different ways. My favorite way of doing it is going to be using isotrim. So we'll go here to boundary surfaces and just plug in the inside one. Now we have the outer frame, the inner frame, or the inner surface. And now we can take the surface and divide it using isotrim. So every time I use isotrim, I bring in two components isotrim and divide domain square, which will give us our subdivision. Now we can plug in that surface both, both into the domain and the surface, and now the segments will go into the domain. And now let's plug in some values for the U and V. So we'll go here to three. Now we can basically subdivide that inside surface. 
Now we can take this, middle click or right click and disable the preview. Now we can move on to creating the inside forms. But before that, let's organize this. This is going to be U and this is going to be V. Next, we need to create an outer line here and then offset it to the inside. So technically we can just plug in this into an offset, but I like to plug it into a curve component. This way you'll see that we actually have poly lines that are extracted from each plane. And the way we know this is we have nine lines and we can bake them and I can select them here and you can see that's kind of the subdivision that it creates and that's the polyline of the outside of that subdivision. Next, so I'll take those and delete them for now. Next, what we need to do is take those and offset them to the inside. The thing is we already offset something to the inside using this. So I'll take this, slide it over, tap Alt, and plug the curve into the input. Now this is going to be the shelves. Now we can use this these two, but we have this overall surface here. So what we're going to do is rather than lofting or anything like that, we're going to go to boundary surfaces once again, plug in this surface. We can even double click on the wire here, create a relay. We'll plug that into this one. And now we're actually going to plug the offsets in holding down shift and flatten the input. Now we can disable the preview on this. Now we've created that. Let's disable the preview on this. Now we have the outer frame, inner frame. We can use this to offset that size. The issue that I'm seeing here is that it actually joins those together. So I don't want to do that. This is going to be the trick on this one. I'm going to create an offset curve. The distance, I'm going to set the number to zero. And plug that in. Now, what I will do is I will loft it together. Now, what I have to do is make sure that I graphed both of these. This way, it organizes it and it does each corresponding one. This is better because we're seeing that these are separate. And the reason why we want to do that is that's going to be allow us to change the size of that. What I mean is that when we create the extrusion, we can extrude it to one specific value or we can play around and let's say change and create a curve attractor or a, a point attractor, things like that, that we can play around with if we have these as separate. So now with having this separate, let's move on. I'll disable the preview on everything except for that and this one. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be extruding this relative to the middle. And there are a few things to this technique. I am going to first move it perpendicular to the original face and then extrude it by twice as much in the negative direction. So for this one, we'll go to move. That'll be the first one. 
then amplitude so it extrudes perpendicular to that face the vector or that's going to be this one then that's going to be the surface we're going to move it's going to go amplitude we'll go 1.50 here's a trick though I'll, I'll show you at the end that we'll have to divide this by two because we're doing it to one side and the other and technically if you go to 1.5 to one side you're actually the overall size is going to be three but this is why I do a component and just do divide by two now I can plug in into a 1.5 and it's going to divide by two and we'll do we'll have to change this around actually no we'll have to do this this way we'll divide the vector by two because you can divide a vector now we're going to take this and extrude it Not half, but twice as much, so the overall, in the negative direction. And what that does is extrudes it relative to the center, and we can give this a value of, let's say, 48 for a max. This is going to be overall. 24 I'll bake this and I'll type in length and I'll see here 24 next we can do that same thing that we did to this to the one above I'm creating a relay because it's better to have one surface that goes into it. That way it can actually plug in any surface to that. And that is actually something that I have on my website. I have a free resource script. And there you can, um, I think one of them is turning a surface into a solid. So this is the way to do that. Okay. Next we'll do it to the one above, which means that it's going to be to these surfaces that's why I need to take all of this and copy it up here so make another copy and then use that with this one now I'm seeing that the reason why this is not working is because they're grafted so if I flatten the input see if oh it's because there is no perpendicular here so the vector we're going to have to use this one, and the vector is going to have to be not this one. We'll use so basically they need to share the same vector so that we know which way it's extruding. Now we can extrude this one, let's say, by a little bit more and have that extrude out, let's say, more on one side than on the other. So now I'll bring in a custom preview so we can take a look at what this looks like. Here is kind of the color for the shelves, and then here are you can plug in the overall form. And I'll increase the size of this. Next, let's increase the subdivisions. So 
And now the idea would be to take this and rather than extruding it just by one value, which is what we have here, we have just one value that we can extrude it by. And let's bring in the ability to change that into random. So we'll go here and we'll bring in a random component, which allows us to create random points. And this is a really important one because it lets you create a um, asymmetry and parametric models. And that's sometimes difficult to do because we're kind of using pr uh, process and steps and it's hard to break geometry sometimes. So with this, we can create ran random numbers and therefore creating more of a random design. So let's go here to number is going to be how many we're going to create. And we see here that we have 64 because that's how many cubbies we have here. So I can type in list length and list length lets me know how many, how many I have. I have 64. Okay, great. So if I have 64, that's how many I want here. The range is by how much do I want it to go in and out? So this one, it is important that we construct some points. So to do that, we'll go here to construct or construct a range. By creating a construct domain, and this way we can plug in, let's say the big number is going to be 28 and the small num number is going to be 12. Now we can plug the domain into the range. And now we see that we have 64 numbers and it's starting at 24, 18, 14, 28. So it's just creating a bunch of random numbers. And we can plug that into our amplitude. So let's go here and see. That it's using this value as the amplitude so now we're going to swap that with we'll create a relay here and swap it with this one as you can see now since our lower limit is so small it's actually bringing them in but we want well it depends on what you want for the design but you almost want this the smallest number to be the same as the overall width, so let's say 24. And then with this other one, it's going to vary the numbers between 24 and let's say 42. And so those are all random extrusions and we can change, let's say, I don't like that solution. So we'll go to three and we can kind of switch them around until you find the one that you want. And so this is one way that we can vary the design just by creating this component that lets us create random random numbers. So let's organize this. And so if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. I'll have this available on my website. And so hopefully you found that interesting. Thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you next time. If you'd like to get a hold of the script that I created for this video, check out my website, capetidavid.com. There you can become a Script Bulb member where you can access all of the video scripts that I've created for my YouTube. You can access also the script store where I have optimized scripts. And lastly, if you want to learn Grasshopper and you've never tried it, or you want to share that with someone, I have a six module course that will help anyone get started. I post videos like this that will teach people how to get started using Grasshopper. So make sure to subscribe for future content. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you next time.